This is the story of the Statue of Liberty. Since arriving in New York back in 1885, Lady Liberty has stood tall against the rapidly changing skyline of New York for 136 years, greeting countless immigrants, some of whom were our ancestors, taking their first steps in becoming American. And although we cherish the notion of this image, not many people realize just what an effort it was for this statue to come into existence, what occurred on Liberty Island prior to her existence, or that there was a time when one could stand out on the small balcony surrounding the torch, assumingly in admiration of a breathtaking view over New York. The fully completed Statue of Liberty measured 151 feet and one inch in total, weighed in at 225 tons and cost $400,000. It was incredibly large, so much so that it needed to be disassembled into 350 pieces and packed into 214 separate crates aboard French freighters. The cargo was so heavy that a ship nearly capsized during its transatlantic journey. All the same, the statue arrived in the United States on June the 17th, 1885, but wasn't assembled until the pedestal was completed just under a year later in April of 1886. Surprisingly, however, this wasn't the first time that the torch had been in the United States. In fact, in 1876, about a decade prior, the torch was exhibited in Philadelphia and later in New York's Madison Square Park in order to raise funds to pay for the statue's pedestal. But on this trip, it was time for the torch to rise. On October the 28th, 1886, President Cleveland officially dedicated the Statue of Liberty in front of a massive crowd. The masterpiece was strategically placed to face the southeast, serving as a welcoming symbol and a beacon for the incoming ships entering New York Harbor. From the beginning, the statue was a tourist magnet, but back then, it was possible to go beyond the crown and into the torch. Although the public has been permanently denied entrance to the torch's balcony for over a century, it wasn't always this way. In fact, visitors were allowed to climb up the entirety of the statue, including the torch, until 1916. Yet, due to the narrowness of the statue's arm, only 12 people were able to make the climb up the torch at once. This area was so small that there was only room for a single ladder and no stairs. The visitor would exit onto a balcony through a small door underneath the flame, which would offer a breathtaking view of the New York skyline from an incredible 300 feet above ground level. There are conflicting opinions on who could actually visit the torch. Some claim that it was available for all. Others hailed it as a popular spot for the adventure tourist. And the New York Times reported that not just anyone was allowed up to the torch even in the early days, but that this was a privilege reserved only for incredibly special VIP guests. Given the infamy of the Statue of Liberty, some degree of urban legend is probably to be expected. We do know for certain, however, the definitive moment when the torch of the Statue of Liberty closed to visitors forever. When World War I was raging on in Europe, the United States had remained neutral until 1917, when the nearby Black Tom Island, which was housing munitions in masses, was sabotaged. The hostility came from Germany, a country that saw the dealing of munitions to Europe as a threat and took actions against the United States. On July the 30th, 1916, at approximately 2.08 a.m., a massive explosion at a munitions depot on the pier connecting Black Tom Island to New Jersey shook the harbor, killing four people and wounding hundreds. According to Jersey City University, Ellis Island had to be evacuated and the explosion reached so far out from the harbor that windows in Times Square were also blown out by the blast. NBC reports that the island's isolated location, as well as the decreased number of immigrants coming to Ellis Island after their home countries began countermeasures to stop citizens from leaving to escape the draft, were both responsible for the lower number of casualties. Anyhow, the attack was later confirmed to be carried out by a group of German agents, and the explosion also damaged the Statue of Liberty's torch and arm with flying shrapnel. And from there on out, 
the torch was closed to the public. It should also be noted here that the right arm's structure had also suffered wear and tear from years of people climbing up and down, having not been designed to support so much weight. Some guests even report to have felt it shaking from within, which must have been a terrifying sensation when 300 feet above ground level. In some ways, the torch is the most vulnerable part of the grand structure, requiring ongoing maintenance and ultimately a replacement. But that's not the statue's only weak point. In fact, maintenance over the years has been outrageous. Another large change that Lady Liberty underwent was a drastic change in color. When she first reached New York's shores, rather than the light shade of green you will most likely recognize today, she was a beautiful, rich red copper. It wasn't until 30 years later that the Statue of Liberty became a bluish green color that most people associate her with. This came about as the result of several different chemical reactions involving copper, sulfur, and oxygen, along with the varied pollution of man-made emissions that came from the city air. This natural oxidation then caused the statue to change from a shiny copper color to a deep dull brown and then finally a bluish green. Other far less desirable chemical changes have also taken place over the years. By 1980, corrosion and leaks from rain, along with damage from the bombing, had rendered the original torch damaged well beyond repair. It was removed from the statue on July the 4th, 1984, and replaced with a gold-plated replica that remained much more faithful to the original version and design. By the end of 1984, the old torch was finally moved to a small, limited capacity museum located in the pedestal of the statue, which workers had to dig a trench into in order to transport the massive torch inside. This museum was largely passed over by visitors to the Statue of Liberty. Business Insider reports that a mere 20% of all visitors who toured the statue made a visit to that museum to see the original flame.